Good evening, ladies and gents. We are six o'clock UK time. Thank you for joining me. Let's let people log in who want to log in. Uh, we'll get started today. Markets have been pretty quiet, actually. Although there's a real odd thing went on with new stock traders. A real odd thing went on with the stocks this morning, and a lot of them were halted. I'm suspicious, right? I'm always, always very suspicious when things like that happen. There's a bit of a liquidity vacuum, the liquidity dried up, and some of the ranges on some stocks were uh, were huge, um, which is interesting. I wonder if they'll ever tell us exactly what happened there. Probably not, but. And there's always a funny thing actually with stocks in that there are rules on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ that trades can get, I think they call it busted. So if it goes out of range, they kind of bust the trade and it's a mess. Um, rare, 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 rare type of thing. But some of these unusual kind of rules they have in place. I actually don't know what would how Pepperstone would deal with that if a trade on under, the underlying got busted if you took the trade. Interesting one to ask the dealers that. Super unlikely, super unlikely that you get, get that fill and it was probably there for a millisecond and the algos had it. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Or is it just me who nerds out on this type of stuff and, and just likes to to know all the rules and regulations and little things and all the nuances and stuff of what's going on under the hood? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Um, okay, we've got here, got some people jumping in. Great, we'll get started. Ladies and gents, good evening to you. Disclaimer first, of course. Uh, hopefully you can all hear me loud and clear. Uh, usual thing, guys. Disclaimer: Please understand the risks. Risky trading is risky. Chance of losing money. High risk with your trading CFDs or a spread bet product or any leverage product. To be fair, okay. Let's get started straight into it. Got a really exciting one for you this evening. This is good. This is good. This is something I've been exploring quite a lot. Um, and before you kind of go, oh, the opening range breakout, blah, 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 it's a bit boring. It's a bit boring. Yes, the simple style of it is easy, if you like. I say boring, but it is an easy system to follow. But I'm going to share with you some real interesting tweaks. And I'm also going to share with you a little tool that I'm going to give you for free, download, complimentary. It cost me money to uh, have coded up. I worked with the developer, several iterations and back and forth, back and forth. I've been using it myself to find these different nuances and different subtleties and variables we can adjust. And you welcome to have it. Uh, and my only ask is if you find something interesting, share it. Just share it. Let me know, hey, these settings work pretty well on this market. I've back tested it. Anyway, I'll go throughout the end. I'm dropping the gun a little bit. Um, but this is quite an interesting topic. Because it's very specific um, and it's something that, you know, is very, very useful for multiple reasons. And we'll get to that in a moment. Let's let's just I'm going off topic. I'm jumping ahead of myself because I'm excited tonight, guys. I'm excited because I like this one. I uh, always like to put a, a stoic quote in there. Marcus Aurelius this time. I think I do a lot of Marcus Aurelius stuff. Maybe I need to do some Epictetus. But anyway, in your actions, don't procrastinate. In your conversations, don't confuse. In your thoughts, don't wander. In your soul, don't be passive or aggressive. In your life, don't be all about business. I think that last sentence is probably quite true for traders. We can get so caught up in the markets. We can get so sucked into trading and the markets and this and that and the other. It's 24-7, I suppose, if you're crypto, 24-5 for everyone else. Um, you know, take some downtime, do some cool things, do some hobbies, relax a little bit. It makes you a better trader. It gives you, if you're completely capitalistic about it, it does give you an ROI having that downtime. So don't be all about business and no, no, business is trading. Okay, let's get going. So topics for today. Um, normally you talk about for 40, 45 minutes, something like that. If you've got a question, you can stick it in the question section, I'm trying to find the screen we're on there. What am I pointing? You guys can't see. On your screen, there'll be a set of questions section. If you want to uh, ask some questions, you're very welcome. And I'll get to those at the end of the uh, webinar. Okay, so talking about trading the range, uh, the opening range breakout or ORB, I'm probably going to use that uh, from now on. History of the strategy, the strategy rules, adjustments and variables. Uh, give you the link so you can have the, you have this uh, tool I had coded up for trading view. Uh, more about that in a moment. Um, and then advanced settings to try. I'm going to show you some back tested stuff that I've done. Again, limitation with back testing. We'll get into why that is, etc. But some settings that you can try and give you some a head start on things. Like anything, guys, with all these any strategies that I share or any research that I kind of you know I'm doing and I share with you, there's no guarantees with anything, right? It's information purposes only. I just give it to you and you go away and do with it what you want. Um, but you know, you should do your own research into it. You should use it as kind of a, a stepping stone to find your own rabbit holes to go down and go, oh, yeah, that's a useful little tool I've got there. I've got some ideas. Hey, let me find something that I think is effective for me and my risk tolerance and all that other stuff. So 
you know, I really, I, I always emphasize that because I just don't like the whole, this is the holy grail type thing because we know that's not the truth. And we've had a discussion before, I had this discussion actually in the, in the, in the Traders Mastermind community literally uh, last Thursday on the Thursday evening call where they've got group coaching call and we're talking about the, the the fact that you know strategies you know they're not effective for all, all the time they're not effective forever you know they come and go and it, and it pays to kind of constantly be adjusting and adapting adding new things to your plan taking things out all that type of stuff so uh you know even if it's running really well and working really well it might always do that uh it, it, this trading is like that the market changes the dynamics change what's driving the market change is uh, we change uh, you know with human beings as well as traders you know back in 2002 three i love sitting in front of the screens all day long they sit there crazy all day long uh all day monday to friday but you know now i like to get out of a break I like to go to the gym i like to be a bit more active I enjoy standing time in front of the screens but all day long nah so it changes okay let's get rolling so theory of this we're gonna go you guys may have heard some of this before um so I'm going to go through some basics, but it's, so just bear with it if you have, because at the end, we're going to add some extra little bits. But if you haven't heard this before, this is for you and you can kind of get a background of what this is all about. So the theory, the idea of the opening range breakout trade is to really let that that opening range kind of work itself out in the wash, uh, the market going back and forth, ping pong back and forth, and then to buy or sell a breakout of that opening range to capitalize on where the trend could go so the idea is that you know you use a 10 15 30 minute we'll discuss more on that in a moment so there's a little example here i've just got 50 uh, you know five minute candles bracketed the high and the low and you're just literally taking a breakout and the, and the theory behind it and like all these things and strategies i like to think what's happening under the hood let's play chess the supply demand what are the higher time frame participants doing how can we capitalize on their sense of urgency okay so the theory for this one is that the open kind of open orders come in you know the guys you uh, you know lots of traders use market open orders that creates a lot of volatility and oscillation and we talked about how to take advantage of those in the in prior webinars but this is something that's a little bit more let that chaos work itself out let that chaos get settled and then let's if there's a trend develops we'll jump on that and i want to share with you later some ideas on how we pinpoint when we trade this because i jump ahead of myself again again i mean sometimes i jump ahead of myself but i want to get the information out there to you you know like any strategy any setup strategy etc when you trade it is the difference between its effort whether it's working or not Example, bull flag, you're all familiar with the bull flag, and those of you who know me know it's one of my favorite patterns. But you trade that in the middle of a crappy little range that does nothing, it's going to just fizzle out. Whereas you trade that after a reprice scenario, breaking through fresh highs, nice height, tight, flat, tight flag after an opening drive, big volume, shallow pullbacks, that's a game changer. That's a much, much, much more higher probability uh, setup to take, in in my opinion. So, okay, the idea of that is to let that new range play out, oscillate around, and we're trying to find the a trend that will resume or could resume after that no guarantees i'm talking about where you put stops obviously of course we want to manage the risk we're not just going to go and hope but it's a nice structured trade um i'm going to jump around a little bit and stick with me and again q a you're welcome to add questions if you wanted something to clarify or me to clarify something should i say so this goes back years ago wyckoff talked about this some of you guys are familiar with wyckoff and i think there's a youtube video out there that's quite popular with my uh i mean talking about wyckoff stuff when my hair was much longer when i had my small little whiteboard uh but you know it's, it's the same type of stuff in there so wyckoff um started all this structure-based approach and then toby crable um he came in and he leveraged on wyckoff's work he made it his own as we all should do as traders we need to take the work from prior traders gone before us uh, and as well as tr looking for fresh ideas and and then make it our own because that's how we have how we use it and it becomes valuable to us rather than just copying we model we model and say hey that's useful let me have my own little twist to it for the modern markets adjust it anyway the uh, theory oh, that you've had a legend legend that sounds a bit e extreme but the story goes that he wrote a book and it was a lot of it was about the opening range breakout and using the open as a guide to trading the trading day and he did lots of kind of analysis on this and he wrote a book and he put it out there and the story goes i don't know if this is true or not that he went out and he bought all the books he went out there and he bought every single copy back because he thought oh, what have i done i've just put i've just let my secret out um 
and he was so worried about it, he went and bought all the other books. Every now and then, one pops up on eBay. I think it's like a grand or something like that. Um, you know, it might be something if you if you enjoy having a thing as a collector's item. Uh, how valuable it is in the modern markets, not sure, but obviously he's a just an adapter. Anyway, that was quite an interesting story, I thought. He started a hedge fund, and he's doing pretty well for himself. You can check it out on Crable.com, and he's, you know, he's doing – decent numbers last time i looked it was something like 11 percent, almost 11 percent. he was managing like eight and a half billion uh, assets under management now i'm not suggesting i'm not suggesting that that eight and a half billion is trading the opening range breakout trade absolutely not i wouldn't perceive that to be the case but if you look at one of his funds one of his funds is uh crable cap uh, sorry crable multi-product part of his uh crable capital management uh, it launched in 1998 it's close to new investors he has a one day average hold time right so this is interesting because he talked about opening range breakout stuff years and years ago wrote those books pulled all the books back started a hedge fund so okay i'm not again i'm not suggesting that it's all running on this opening range breakout trade but but it wouldn't be a stretch to suggest this guy who's a successful hedge fund manager is using some kind of Thing related to that and it's one of his strategies to talk about his strategy types he's got short-term momentum mean reversion trend participation and all this type of stuff and i'm sure he's got multiple multiple models but what's interesting is that you know that's how he started developing that trading that enough to get some kind of track record for for people to allocate capital on top of his and to start his fund right so what's the point of me telling you all this i'm telling you all this because i believe that this is something that is sustainable i think it's something that if you get the right uh, flavor and you get the right variables, it can be quite useful. I'm just kind of pointing and we, we make, we're putting, you know, two and two together and getting five here in a way, but I'm just kind of showing you that this guy was trading opening range breakout, did a big study on it, wrote a book on it, and now he's operating hedge fund. It wouldn't be so far stretch to suggest that he's using some of those concepts in his fund. Who knows? Who knows? So anyway, the, the efficacy is, is, is probably there. All right, so uh, he did a lot of work on the opening range breakout method, and and again, we're going to come back and forth a little bit. So, so stick stick with me. He realised that the open was a very key part of the trading day, as did a lot of the you know, traders from years gone by. Wyckoff did, you know, you do, I do. I know that the open is very very key. And we talked about this in other webinars, like hey, the, the range of the open is key. How the range we talked about opening type, opening uh, open type, should I say? You know, we're double testing, we're pulling back. So it's very, very important for the trading day. And it can give you the, the bias of direction for the next couple of hours. And it can give you a multi-day, a potential multi-day move. And Toby, just I want you to note this and remember this because we're going to loop back around and talk about this more in a moment. Toby Crable noted that trading the opening range breakout after an NR7 yielded the best results. And NR7, if you those of you who don't know, is a narrow range seven. And what a narrow range seven is, is basically the narrowest range for the past seven days. So you take the high minus the low, there's your range. It's the smallest range for the past seven days. That's an NR7 day. Again, we'll go into more detail of this in a moment, but I want you to kind of have that in your mind. Um, I know Linda Rashke did some work on this. And the idea is that you get the compression of volatility. And then after the compression of volatility, there's tends to be an expansion in volatility. So this is a, a volatility expansion strategy effectively so if you're trading that volatility expansion range expansion when's the time best time to time it crable noted it was actually after you'd had a very very crushed volatility crush range and that's something that i'm going to share with you some back testing stuff that i've done as well and i'm going to give you the tools so you can go and dig yourself that's something that i that i um i concur with um all right so let's skip back a little bit we're running back and forth but why why trade this because you might say, well, what's the point? Why am I going to trade this? I think it's a nice strategy to trade systematically. The rules are very, very clear. You, There's no ambiguity. It's not some strategies, you've got ambiguity, right? Like, when do I pull the trigger? Do I do this? Do I wait for that? Do I wait for the close of this? Do I do this? This is very simple. You can set this up beforehand. The rules are very, very clear. And there's a couple of good, you know, additional benefits, I think, of trading this, especially if you're a trader who's perhaps struggling to develop a strategy you're struggling with discipline to pull the trigger and then this confusion is being developed as a trader you can go back to something like this and it's very very easy to follow it keeps you away from the open if you're getting chopped up in the open you often get caught in the open then then back off a little bit and trade this and wait for the open to, to finish 
and then trade the resulting trend. It's very focused. It's very planned. It's very predefined. You know what you're going to do. You don't have to leave anything to chance. There's no ambiguity. There's, there's almost you can you can eliminate any discretion if you want to add some discretion. Of course, you can do with any strategy. You can add a little la layer of discretion depending on how disciplined you are and how much you trust your own judgment in the heat of the moment. But if you don't want to, you can have it as a very very systematic strategy and trade it rule based. Click. I see this. Click. I'm going in. You can set limit orders. You can set stop orders, entries, etc. So but the key to its success is when you're going to trade it, just like I said, mentioned before, with a lot of, with, with, I say a lot, everything. I think every single strategy, the key to success is when you're going to trade it. So let's explore that a little bit further. So the foundational rules, if you like, are you bracket that open. I've got a chart and example in a moment to, to kind of visualize this, help you visualize this. The open is, again, this is one of the variables you can adjust. Toby Crable did a 10 minutes. There's been a lot of work done on 15 minutes. What was the guy? There's a book. Uh, I should have had it to hand. There's a guy, one of the very first trading books I bought, um, and it was talking about the only range breaker. It, it, it will come to me. Perhaps it'll come to me later on. Um, 15 minutes and 30 minutes. You can choose kind of what the open is to you or what you consider the open to be. Very simple rule. You buy a breakout above the high. You short a breakout below the low. After that, period is gone. So let's say you saying to yourself the open is the first 15 minutes right very simple um arbitrary number but fine let's start with that the high was say 112 dollars 50 cents the low was 110 dollars 75 cents after that 15 minutes is done you mark the high you mark the low you go short if it went under 110 75 you go long if it went above 112 50. so hopefully that's really clear really simple but that's a very simple version of it, okay? We've got a lot of parameters we can tweak, a lot of parameters, and this is where we find the sweet spot for when we trade it, the parameters we use, the open, all these other, other bits and pieces. So let's visualize this very, very quickly. Your five minute chart, Tesla, there's your three candles, there's your 15 minutes, so you bracket the high, bracket the low, 127.88, 125.03, you would buy then, and that's, what's that, the 25th minute? Uh, as it breaks out, there's your entry long. So it's a very, very simple trade. You know, you're just buying that breakout there. Another one here will be sure on uh, the DAX. You've got your open. Of, and, and maybe I should have mentioned this. But one thing to consider is the open for me is the open of the cash underlying. So when does the, when do the stocks start to trade for the DAX? The stocks start to trade for the NASDAQ. The stocks start to trade for the Dow. Etc. I've included an example actually on our, on our currency pair later because using that as a kind of a proxy because as we know the money starts to flow when the options pit is open and all this kind of stuff is going on. Um, pit, not much pit action going on anymore, but when the options are open and there's money flowing around, you can use kind of some of the currencies as a proxy. But that's something you can explore if you're an FX trader. I would welcome your kind of uh, you know your homework and dig around and explore, but we'll get to that in a moment. So here's a paper stone ch uh, chart of uh, their DAX equivalent, 50 minute bracket. There's your high, there's your low, and we're selling as we break through the low here. It didn't break through the high, uh, it's come down, it's actually broken through the low, and you're looking for to capture that resulting trade. Nice cherry picked example. I hold my hands up. That is a cherry picked example. It's quite recent, so I didn't go back years and years and years. But I wanted to show you kind of exactly how it all worked. Uh, they're all obviously not always going to work. We'll talk about risk management in a moment. Okay, so the format I like to talk about is the theory, the trigger, uh, the filters, etc. So triggers is very, very simple. It's simply a breakout entry. As we saw back there, you're literally setting the low here. Uh, you'd rather do that waiting by the by the by the uh, by the mouse as the market starts to trade through that level, or you'd use a sell stop entry. Right, same with the Tesla. You use a buy stop entry to get yourself in. Or you'd wait and alert, maybe went off and you come and you'd manually take the trade. Um, so it's very, very simple. There's no there's no ambiguity there. You're not waiting for something clever. It's just simple. If the price is above that level, you want in. The price below that level, you want in. We've got some variables we can adjust with that, which we'll talk about in a moment. But fundamentally, that's what we're doing. So a few variables we can play with is how wide is the open? Okay. How, how, what do we, in other words, time? Do we go 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes? Do we allow a few extra ticks before we enter? This is something that I give credit to a friend of mine and trader, Imran, who who is in Traders Mastermind. Uh, he did a lot of work on this with a lot of the European indices. And something he discovered, and I actually added this to the opening range breakout engine tool, is actually on some days, he noted that waiting for a few ticks above before you enter, like a little buffer, 
stops you getting kind of wicked out, stops you getting kind of taken in by a tick and then dropping back. And so that's a variable we can adjust rather than, hey, I'm going to go in at 15136.3 or 15137 or whatever it is. You can give yourself maybe a few ticks, three ticks, four ticks, whatever you feel is right. Again, we'll talk about adjusting that so that you're not just getting pinged out and, and playing around with that. So you can give yourself a little bit of a buffer zone and say, okay, I'm going to get straight in when it breaks the high or the low in this case. I'm going to let it come down maybe three ticks. And then when it does that and it breaks down three ticks, then I'm going to take the trade. So uh, do, 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 wrong way. So do we have, allow a few extra ticks before we enter? And again, that was something that this, this, this is kind of collective, right? I think is why it's just so useful and why I'm you know, giving you guys access to this tool is that we find little things. Someone goes down a rabbit hole and says, hey, that's quite interesting. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? And collectively, you kind of have all this firepower and brain power to work with something, this common goal of finding you know, little bits and pieces that are relevant. So that's quite a good little variable you can adjust. And then what time we can enter. So what I kind of mean by time we can enter is if you do the first 15 minute range, do you then say, hey, I'm only going to give myself you know, another 15 minutes or I'm going to give myself another hour before I take the trade? You might be like, well, what, what do you mean? What I mean by that is, you know, you want some sense of urgency, but at the same time, you don't want to restrict yourself too much. You know, an extreme example would be, you know, it breaks out in the last you know, 10 minutes of the day, you know, I'd be like, no, 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 no. It's been a range bound all day. If the high and low was done in the first 15 minutes, you probably don't want to take it. So you probably want to restrict yourself and have a little window of opportunity where you say, hey, if it's a two hours or so after that first trade, after an hour or so, something like that, we'll talk, again, we'll talk about the variables in a moment, then I only want to take it in that window. I don't want to let it go further than that. I only want to take it in that window. So after the first 15 minutes, maybe give yourself another 45 minutes. And if it doesn't trigger and break out the high or low of that opening range in that 45 minutes, you don't take the trade. That's something you can play around with. And that makes sense to me. Okay, so more variables in a moment, but let's get to stops. Um, mismanagement key to any any strategy. And it's, I think it's probably the you know, why a strategy would work or why it doesn't. The good, good thing this is stops are very structured. The, the basic way to do this is to have your stop above the high or below the low. So you know, if you're going short here, for example, and we can see this is a little bit dark, your stop might be above that high there. Okay, and if you went long and it broke out to the high side, your stop would be the low. Now, the the problem you have with that, that I've discovered in back testing, and others have, have kind of corroborated this as well, is that that's quite wide. And very often, if it's coming back into that range, the trade you know tends to lose its efficacy, and you, you most of the time you want to be out a little bit quicker. So one way to kind of mitigate that, reduce the stop a little bit, not take as much risk. Yes, you're going to lose. Maybe some of the trades are going to eventually work out, but I think it's a good kind of uh, scale to tip. You know, it's like trading, guys. You kind of give one hand and take the other. Got to find that happy medium. Um, use a percentage of the range. So if the range was 100 points, 100 ticks, you might say, hey, 50% of the range, whatever that range happens to be in the day, I'm going to use that. So in that case, it would be 50 ticks. Uh, if it was 200 point, it'd be 100 ticks. You get the point. So a percentage of the opening range based stop um, and play around that. And, and again, you, we'll, we'll explore that more in a moment. I've got time. Yes, we're on time. Good. Uh, trading stops. You know, you know, I think I'm not a huge fan, I have to admit, I'm not a huge fan of trading stops. But I think that, uh, excuse me, if you are trading something systematic and you're trying to jump on a trend then a trailing stop kind of makes sense to a certain degree um but there's your options anyway okay targets use a fixed risk reward ratio for the trade so you might say okay i'm, I'm risking one r and i want to make two r you know very very simple math so you go whatever that risk is i want to you know if, if my it, it's going to be dynamic right it's going to be depend on the width of the range the range is 100 points and you're risking half of that you might target might be 100 points because you're risking 50. Uh, you're just playing that game. A scale of portion of key areas, that maybe adds an element of discretion or hold for the day. This is my preferred strategy with this is to say, hey, listen, I'm trying to get on a trend day. That's really what I'm trying to do. I'm not trading it all the time, but I'm trying to pinpoint the times when it's I think it's most effective and jump on that, hold that thing for the whole day. Um, that's my preference. But again, you can play around with this. Uh, going back to that, uh, you know, good tr trader friend of mine, Imran, he likes to kind of scale out 1R, 2R, and then leave a trailer. Play around with it, adjust it, see how you feel. So some examples, and we'll go on to this, 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 uh, this engine in a moment. 
uh so you kind of might say this example you're taking a 30 minute uh um range only range you have your high you have your low you bracket it uh you get short here your stop is halfway through you 50 percent of the range as you stop and you're holding it and your target is uh 200 for example or you can close it say 10 minutes before the opening bell like it said you're using a hybrid of holding it for the whole day or 10 minutes before the uh, closing bell and a target and, and this example uh, you, know, you got short, you, you stayed with it, stayed with it, stayed within, and finally hit your target. Um, so what, one way of kind of trading this. Uh, another one here, your opening range. By the way, this I'll give you this, you know, I've kind of jumped ahead of myself a little bit, but um, these shaded areas show you the open that you've bracketed. So you're saying here, it's a 30 minute range on this example. This kind of purpley, movie sort of color um, is when you allow to take the trade, you're allowed to trigger the trade. It triggered quite early in this one, but if it triggered after they wouldn't take it. And this, yeah, whatever, colory, pinky, purple, not even purple, is it orange, pinky on my screen? Maybe it's orange on yours. Um, I'm not colorblind, honestly. <laughs> that sort of pinky color there when you close the trade if you hadn't been filled. So using that as a reference, a uh, very wide opening range here. Uh, and they can see how this, if you're using a fixed multiple of the range, it's why it, you, it can can be not great. Uh, but you've got a big wide range. You get triggered along here. There's your target because you're using, say, 200% of the range, 200% uh, of the risk what, right up here. doesn't quite reach it. So you've got that additional um, sort of catch-all that says, hey, if the target's not reached or I've not been stopped, then I'm coming out uh, just before the bell. Uh, and this is a US product. I don't know why I didn't screenshot it with the, it's probably a DAO, isn't it? um us products long here and you're closing just there okay one more i think yes this is why i'm going to the uh using cable uh up usd as a, a sort of proxy for the equity market um so when the equity market opens half past two my time uk time wherever you are you know when the equity uh, us equity market opens you're bracketing it fine you've got your highs you've got your low you're triggered short Yes, it comes. It nearly comes and stops you out for using 50% of the trade. You may have got pinged. You know that's the, that's the point of, the, of the having to stop there, right? And my little grimace face uh, rolls over, and finally you're closing just before the closing bell. So you can use it on. I think I've not done much, but I've got to hold my hands up here and say, hey, I've not done much work on the currency pairs. So take that with a pinch of salt. But I don't see why you couldn't use it as a proxy, as we know that you know they're moving single. There's an inverse correlation, that type of stuff, depending on which currency pair you're selecting. So I don't see why it wouldn't work if you like to trade, um, you know, the, the currency pairs rather than the equity indices or or stock or whatever. Then understand, you know, go and have a look and, and play around with it. This is an example there. Um, have I got one more? Yeah, last one. This one you got stopped out on a trailer. You're short here uh, on the close of this bar or on the on the uh, break of this bar here. Comes back. You may have got pinged depending on what happened. But anyway, rolls over. And the stops come back up, and the stops been moved to one eye, and you're stopped out because it didn't kind of go and didn't have a big fat trend day. Fine. Enough of those examples. Let's talk about other variables, and then let's look at some of the the things we can adjust with this uh, tool that I'm going to give you in a moment. So, when you take the trade, these are the ideas I wanted to think about. Other variables. When do you take the trade? How do you select the market you trade? Do you have a directional bias? And how do you filter the trade? Let's explore. So. One way to filter it, and this is, you know, this is, this is, if I give you anything, this is where to start the journey on after you've had a narrow range seven day, because we have that genuine, most of the, that's not, not the correct terminology. A lot of the time, we have a range expansion after we've had a narrow range. It makes sense, right? When everyone's like, oh, I don't know, is it up or down? Then when it starts to expand next day, and you just kind of say, okay, well, again, we don't know, right? We don't know when we're going to get a range expansion. We don't know. But statistics show that after we've had narrow range, generally it's cyclical the market, range expansion, range contraction, range expansion, range contraction, range contraction. Why don't we time a range expansion type trade, which is what we're trading here, continuation trade, trend day, how trend the trade, however you want to categorize it. And by the way, categorization, if you're on Trading Plan Pro, that is coming soon, categorization of your strategies. I'm thinking that in my mind, adding it in there, but that's worth mentioning. So you've got this expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. And Toby Crable noticed this, that it often preceded a breakout or trend day. And what better way to try to take advantage of a breakout day than use the opening range breakout, right? This makes logical sense. Now, is it holy grail? No, no, no. It's not. Nothing is. But it's a sensible thing to do. 
right? And it makes sense, doesn't it? It's like, okay, I can see bigger money, waiting, 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 waiting. We finally get that range expansion. I want to be on it. I don't, how, how, how the hell do I know when it is? Well, actually, let's do some work and let's have a look and see what precedes that. Well, often we get that narrow range seven. Do we always get that? No. Is it always going to be a range expansion day after? No. But it, it starts to give you a little bit of a clue. You start to, hmm, yeah, that smells like a trend day. Eh? Well, you know, I fancy some of that. So after narrow range, uh, the market's high probability of a trend day. And again, take all the stuff I say here with a huge pinch of salt and do your own research on it. Uh, again, but I'm, I'm kind of leveraging on other work that other people have done, adding my own flavor to it. And you get a bit more directional bias. So the last thing you want to do when you're trading an opening range breakout is for the thing to break out and then just run out of puff and come back in because it's going to ping you out. And I think that's a problem that most people have with the opening range breakout trade is they might look at it and it's quite popular, right? We, you've probably heard of it. Maybe you've heard of it. It's why I jumped on the webinar. Like, I've heard of it. Yeah, I may have tried it and I think it's great. But using it all the time, I believe, is ineffective. I believe it's a losing strategy to use it all the time. But that's the difference. If you can find the time when to use it, if you can allocate your resources and risk capital in the right time, that's when it can become effective. Rather than just every single day trading, 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 going, it's not working, it's not working. Well, it's not going to because if the market's sitting in a range for five or six days, and you're buying breakouts, you're going to get nailed. You get your face ripped off if you're trying to short breakouts to the downside. You don't want to do that. You want to time when you're doing it. Okay, so timing it um, from that from a narrow range perspective. Another way to do it, and this was a discussion we'd had I think probably a few months ago in in, on, in Trades Mastermind. We uh, the guy in there called Scottish John. Heads up, Scottish John. Ha uh, had sorry, heads up. Hello, Scottish John. If if you're here, uh, he talked about hey, I, how I do is I align with the daily chart. So one method is to kind of screen for a daily chart pattern and then take the opening range breakout when you see something on a daily chart that aligns with what you want to do. So let's say the daily chart's about to break out, you're at the lower end of an uptrend channel, uh, but you've got earnings or a catalyst. So give me an example here. Let's say you see a bearish engulfing. The next day you might say, I'm going to deploy the opening range breakout strategy now because I've seen something on the prior day that may indicate that today will be in a range extension too. Just like we did the narrow range seven, in this example, you're we saying, hey, what are the little candlestick patterns or technical patterns that you know as a trader occur in the market that might have a propensity for the next day to follow through? Examples, pin bar, uh, you know, breakout of highs, breakout of a trend day, you know, anything like this. Now, this is this is where we admittedly we talked at the beginning about having very systematic. This perhaps isn't, but it allows you to, you know, time and, and activate this trade. And we should, you know, I think with with a lot of trading guys, we should we should think of it as you've got all these strategies and they sit in different buckets. And you and like any good weapon, you deploy that weapon when it's going to be the most effective, right? You don't deploy. I'm trying to think of an analogy here that's not ridiculous. Uh, I'm not a military guy, but I imagine you don't employ a 50 caliber machine gun in close quarter urban combat when you're trying to breach a room for example so my so military might be able to correct me but you get my point right you're going to use the right weapon for the job and you try to use what you think is the right tool for the job and, and i think that's the same with trading right so the, the opening range breakout trade you you want to use it when you think you're going to get that range expansion that trend type day we talked about narrow range seven but you can also time it with something on your daily chart that you like to trade generally okay so Let's quickly run on to uh, this tool. So you can, you, you, this tool is, I'm giving it to you guys. I'm just giving it to you because I want you to get some value from it, right? It's, as I say, I had a developer code it up. We're back and forth for ages working it out. And it's not a standalone thing. It's not something I say, oh, this is a magic indicator that you can go and put on your charts and it's going to be a cash machine, all this nonsense. No, it's a tool that you helps you test different ideas and variables uh, for the opening range breakout and, and that's exactly what it's for because trading view if you've got trading view has a really good back testing functionality you load this tool up i'll show you some screenshots in a moment you adjust some parameters and you can see how effective it is or not and it's a very easy way to do that and then you can go on and potentially trade that or add that strategy to your trading plan if you feel like it's got some um credibility so tradingmastermind.com forward slash orb email in there and then you will be, I think it's set up that you will then email the link to TradingView. You click on that on TradingView, 
and you can add that uh, script. They call it a script, don't they? Or strategy scripts to your charts. So you get access to it like that. I had the code here, but trying to work out how to do it and put it over just a mess. Easy way to do that. You get a link sent to you straight away to your inbox. And I'm going to choke it off at 100 downloads. There were thousands of people having this thing because, yeah, they spent some time and some resources getting this done. So, But yeah, have it, play around with it. And if you find something that's valuable, um, please you know, share. Share it. Send me a DM or send me a, a message or send me an email. Uh, and say, hey, I've been playing around with this obscure market, Coco or something, and I think there's really, really good. Have a look. Interesting. I'm super interested to see what you guys get up to. Anyway, let me quickly talk about this tool. Like I say, this is, uh, by the way, I'm not supporting this. I'm not, as in, I'm not going to give you any technical support. It is as it is. Um, you, you use it and not giving any assurances or anything like that, and if it breaks, it breaks, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but uh, I just can't obviously support it. It's something I'm just giving you guys for free, but um it, it it does work it works fine but i'm not going to support any any i'm not going to provide any technical support as you can understand so this is what happens when you load it up you, you, let me run through very very quickly what the variables are give some tips on where to start with it uh and by the way you don't need this right um, it's free you can have it if you want it but you don't need this you can do this manually um or whatever charting package you use you don't need to have this tool but i just had this code i was the reason i had this coded up i was doing a lot of work on the opening range breakout i was trying to look and see and develop a kind of systemized strategy to complement my discretionary side of the business and go right i need something more that kind of allows me to test ideas and thoughts and tweaks and just see i know back test doesn't mean that the future is going to be the same but i wanted that so i had this tool coded up for that purpose and that's really what it is so very quickly you can choose here to take um, long trades, uh, short trades, or flip trades. Now, long trades is just uh, you're only taking long. So in other words, if you bracket the range high and low, if it breaks the downside, you never take short. You only take long. Uh, and same with short trades. So you can have both set that takes either or, whichever one breaks. It breaks the high side, you take that. It breaks the low side, you take that. Or one. So it breaks the low side and you're long, it won't take it. And that's good if you've got a directional bias on a market. It's very good. Um, and I've got to be careful what I'm saying here. You know, I believe it's very good to trade this type of thing if you want to get along a market. Like an example a while ago, you know, Tesla was getting beaten down. You think, okay, if it flushes lower, maybe the next day you want to get along, but how do you time along? Well, this might be something you can deploy. So you can deploy in different ways. Anyway, long trade, short trade, and flip. Flip was something that I uh, had added because I wanted to see what would be like under certain conditions if you took the opposite. So this was a kind of fun thing that I added. And flip basically means when it breaks the high, you go short. When it breaks the low, you go long. And I don't think there's any efficacy to it, but I wanted to see if there was something. It just made it, just made it a kind of a multi-dimensional tool. And I could say, right, actually, if I think there's going to be a very, very tight range today, can I fade that high and fade that low? So that's what that flip trade uh button does but that's you know not really part of the uh part of part of this strategy is something else is initial things used to do right opening time uh and range and trading range and we discuss those very quickly the opening time and range is when the open is so here i've got this set eight o'clock eight thirty it's a 30 minute opening range right so dax open eight o'clock eight thirty and the trading range is when you're allowed to when you allow it to trigger so in this instance eight thirty to one o'clock is when it's allowed to trigger. If it doesn't do it, then it won't trigger. So if it does it kind of you know, two o'clock, it won't do it. And by the way, the reason you're doing this is this is a strategy. So it shows it on your chart. Um, and also you, you get the back testing results. This is why it's very useful to do this. You can kind of back test all the variables on the instrument of your choice. Um, okay, ATR lowest in X days filter is that narrow range seven type thing. Uh, it's close enough. The ATR is close enough. In the you say, okay, I want if I tick that box, I'm basically saying I only want to take this trade if the prior day was the lowest range it's been for X days, and you put in there, and I put in seven, you can put in four, you can put in three, you can you can untick it. Um, okay, range buffer is is what we talked about. If it breaks the high, you have a little buffer. So you might say, okay, I want to, I, you can have it in pips, you can have it in percent. So pips is ticks. And percent is obviously percentage of the range, but you can say, right, um, you know, I want to go 10. To, if it breaks high, I want to wait for at least 10 ticks. There's some limitations, by the way, to this. And um, obviously, training has the limitations. It, you, you, you will only do it on the close of the bar. 
So and that's just a limitation with with trading view. So go to a really low time frame so you get the kind of clean, clean, uh, crisp trigger on it. And another thing is uh, that's worth mentioning: the opening time. Just eyeball where it visualizes on the chart. It will show you on the chart and shade it, but just eyeball it because sometimes the the chart you're looking at is in exchange. It wants it in exchange time. Sometimes it's in UTC. But so you have to just adjust that and make sure it's lined up with what you want. But play around with it. You work it out. It's not not hard to work out. Uh, okay, buffer. Yeah. Now we can define your stop, take profit, and break even. So you can have a take profit method in pips or percentage. So back then we talked about you know a two hundred percent or hundred percent. A two hundred percent will be two R, right? So if you had a stop loss and you set the stop loss here, I should have kind of shared the screen or the trading view, but you can click that and say stop loss is X percent of the range. So if you set it to a hundred. It'll be 100% of the range. If the opening range is 100 ticks, it'll be 100 point, 100 ticks. If you set it to 50%, it will do half of the opening range. So it will calibrate the stop loss depending on the opening range for you. Same with the take profit method. It will calibrate the take profit based on the opening range if you want to, or you can force it to just use pips. Now, of course, that's going to need to change depending on what instrument you're trading, but you can do that if it's one particular instrument you like to trade only. So you can play around with that. And the break-even method, it, it basically the engine will pull your stop to break even after a certain level has been hit. So if you've got, let's say you've got a uh, a two R target, so two hundred percent of the of the range target. After it's done one hundred percent, so it's done the range. Let's say the range was hundred points. Your target is two hundred points up. After it's done a hundred points, you can set that break-even method to say, hey, after it's done a whole of the range, pull that stop to break even and run the strategy like that. Uh, use closing time is very, very important to have this ticked. And one thing with the tool is make sure you have that ticked. Otherwise, it will hold the trade over multiple days and it will just mess up the whole thing. So make sure you have the closing time ticked. The basic says if the stop's not hit, my target's not hit, my break even is not hit, I want to close the trade at a certain time and, and put that to the close or whatever time you want. It could be midday. We could You could leave it on the noon balloon trade we talked about. So the closing time is there to close the trade regardless. And by the way, if you don't want any stops or any targets and you just want to have open to close and see how that does, leave those at zero. It'll be fine. It'll work like that. Uh, max trades per day is a thing we have to add really to combat it triggering multiple times. Always have that set at one. I have not found any reason to have it set at two. There's a, a maybe a slight reason that perhaps you'd want to trade it again if it broke out later in the day, but I don't see why you'd do that. So have that, leave that set at one. And this stuff down here is just trading views, backtesting tool stuff. It backtests it from all the data it's got all the way through to the current data uh, and does that. So let me give you some examples on some stuff that is, I think, is worth digging around at. So this was uh, the DAX. And this is where there's a little anomaly here. It says opening time 10 o'clock, but it's actually 8 o'clock UK time, which is the DAX open. I'm using a 15-minute opening range. I'm allowing it to trigger long between uh, 10, 15 and uh, 11 o'clock, which not necessarily accurate these times, but it's 45 minutes after that. So in the first hour, basically, uh, settings I've used on this, no range buffer, uh, no stop, just a closing time. And you can see, you know, it's reasonably, reasonably effective. It's not too bad. It's doing all right. Better ones here is when we start adding the ATR filter. Okay, now it's getting a bit more interesting. So we're on the NASDAQ. Uh, I'm using the QQQ, but you could use you know whatever instrument you want. Uh, this is exchange time. So 9.30 to 9.45 is a 15-minute opening range. I'm bracketing the first 15 minutes. You can see here, we're using a 15-minute chart, and it's getting triggered in here as it breaks the high. Trading range, I'm allowing it that first kind of hour uh, and a quarter in this instance. And I'm, I'm filtering these out to say, here, only trade these, only trade these after we've had a narrow range seven day. And use a stop loss of 100% of the range, no target, no break even, but close it just before the closing bell. Or actually, it's, it's uh, yeah, just before the closing bell, 15 minutes before. And you can see, you know, it's reason, again, back testing, back, you know, back testing's got a lot of limitations, but it's it's something you can start to look at. And you can go through, look at the list of trades and see, but it's quite effective, right? And what's quite effective here is, you know, the, the profit and loss. When you get good numbers, when it's just a slither, you're like, oh, that's not very good. When you get good numbers, it's worth maybe exploring more. And you can change some of the properties. Those of you familiar with strategy you know this to kind of fix it to a share number or what have you. So these numbers are just adjusted depending on how you pump in the position size. Train, uh, trade view, trade view, trading view has a lot of kind of resources on how to use the the strategy thing. This is just using their 
uh, tool, if you like, and adding our own tool onto it. Uh, another one here, again, this is this is pretty good. Uh, this is picking Tesla because Tesla kind of has these quiet times and bursts. So we've got the same type of thing, we've got a 15-minute opening range. We're taking both long and short here. We're allowing it to trigger up to 10.45 Eastern time. Again, the key one, filtering out these trades, only taking it after we had a narrow range seven days. So the prior day was a narrow range. It has been for seven days. No buffer on this. Uh, no take profit. I'm looking for the whole day. Uh, stop loss at 100% of the range and closing just before the closing bell. This is interesting, right? Something to explore. 60% profitable, reasonable number of trades. But I like this type of thing. When you've got the average winning trade is much, much more than the average losing trade. I know there's limitations to backtesting. Those of you who are cons in there are going, well, oh, this is not... You know, this is not how you do it and all this stuff. So if I get it, right? I'm a discretionary guy. I just had this tool code up to help me look at stuff. But it's interesting. And there's stuff you can play with and um, you know, adjust the variables and see and kind of see. And again, it's a very systematic way to trade. It's a way to trade if you're kind of a bit lost. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I do Maybe you try it out. You try on a demo. You try a very, very small size. You make sure, you know, you've got stops in place and you watch a few markets. I think it's just an interesting, really interesting strategy to explore a little bit more. Like I say, you know, they've got some credibility back there with people who have been using this for, for many, many years. And, and hedge fund managers who, like I say, may not use it in the hedge fund per se, but I'm sure there's concepts from it that have kind of made their way over. Um, okay, so summary, guys, is it can be a good, simple strategy to build from the opening range breakout. Uh, useful if you want to start somewhere and you want to dial your discipline. And I forgot to mention that. If you're struggling with discipline, and we're going to kind of next webinars, we're really going to go into discipline a lot more. So if that's something that you, you want to kind of explore and develop more, um, you know, look out for the email from Pepperstone on that one. Um, but it's really good if you're struggling, you want a really systematic way to trade things and build from it. You can add some discretion elements in later. And adding layers of variables to enhance the edges key. So when you trade this strategy, that's the key. That's the key to its efficacy. Uh, yeah, treasuremastermind.com forward slash ORB, email address in there. You know how it works, guys. Email address goes in there. I will send you one email a week just to let you know about a podcast that I've uploaded. Um, I'll let you know about a webinar. And Pepperstone, you'll go on there. I think you're on the list. If you're on the list already because you've been on here, you can unsubscribe, right? You know the game works, guys. Pepperstone will send you some emails now and then and you can play the game. But yeah, th that's going to send it straight away to you and you can access that via trading view. All right. Let me take a breath. Let me see if we have any questions. If we have any questions, fine. If we don't, then I will call it an evening. Any questions, ladies and gents? I think, woof, no questions. That's all right. That's good. Uh, I will give it a few seconds to see if anyone wants to ask anything specific about that. But if we don't have any questions, that means that either everyone's fallen asleep, potentially, or I've covered everything and uh, the topic went down well okay some questions are coming in thank you gents and ladies ah. Rory ashton said i'm writing i'm writing don't 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 close the webinar yet i'm writing a question uh a uh, good question here from robert how you doing robert have you done testing on this after overnight gaps no i haven't this is, i've got a list of stuff in my notebook trusty notebook that i really want to explore more uh, was one of those absolutely you know i think that it's, especially if you're an, an earnings play like if you have an earnings gap then trading that and it just makes sense i don't necessarily need to test this as such but i just know hey if i if i see a gap after earnings you know there's going to be volatility generally speaking that might be a good time to deploy it that's a really good good question and good thinking um but yeah i've got no um kind of uh backed up data to to do that and i don't know how you could do this um with the with that maybe it's something i'll add on version this is about version four already maybe i'll do a version five and send you guys a copy on that um uh step on us can momentum also be a key with this strategy absolutely absolutely you, you're trying well, what you're trying to do is um you, you're either going to say okay I, I believe this momentum. Let me let me continue with the momentum and let me trade the momentum and let me dip, you know believe the momentum is going to continue. Or you try to identify when the momentum might start. Ultimately, we need that. We need that. Otherwise, it's just a it's a strategy just gets will get stopped out. If you're trading in a range bound environment or really shallow environment, then um, you know you're going to struggle with it. So you either trying to identify what precedes momentum. Um, 
you know you can use like a momentum ignition chart on a daily and then use this type of thing to, to help you get in so it, it really you know I, it, I like this because it really systemizes and just just eliminates all areas of doubt of if you see something you want to get and join the train you're like well i've got a way to do it i've got a day trading way to maybe get into this trade um what is the atr setting ah Yes, that's a very good question, Armin, and very astute of you, as always, to rec recognize that. The ATR is set at one, so it's the range, effectively. And the only reason I've used ATR, and really it's a little bit misleading, it should, should be the range, um, is that it's just going to give you the range, basically, from the prior day. And it goes back and it says, hey, it's a one-period ATR, and it just says, hey, was it the the high? Was it the highest? Or was, it, was it the lowest in the past X days? Good question. I, I forgot to mention that. Um, Thank you, Victor, for your feedback link. Not yet downloaded. I hope it's on its way to you. Um, should be. I did test it. It's, it's tested out. It should be there. But if not, send me. Um, you know, you guys know how to get in contact with me. I'll I'll try and get it sorted. Um, I meant some volume, filled in details. Try again. Check your junk. Check your junk. ATR period. Yeah, I've answered that one. He's got it now. It's come through. Great. Good. He thoughts having a direction bias and building a position within the range. Any thoughts having a direction bias and building a position within the range? I get yeah, the initial uh, question there, but directional bias, absolutely. Absolutely. If you've got a directional bias with a stock or a mining market and you want to get in the market, then you can say, okay, well, I want to get in this. I'd like to get in and be involved in this on the long side or the short side. How do I get in? And you've got all these ideas and this and that and the other. You can just deploy this and say, right, well, I'll just wait. I'll set this on short only. And if we get a range, I'll, I'll trade that. And I've used this 50% of the range uh, stop. And if I get stopped, and I'll, and I'll play that a few times. I think that's a way, yeah, absolutely. You could uh, you can do that um, and use it to add to positions. Uh, Got, uh, da, 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 da. However, no email. It'll be on its way. Give it a few minutes. If everyone's hammering, it'll come in a minute. Camo, it's been, it's tested, it's working. Um, but if it's not, then send me an email or whatever, and I'll, I'll send, I'll get someone to give you the uh, link. Okay, question here from Roy. You're always commenting. I appreciate your comments, pal. You are here regularly. I just turned from demo to lie. I find it so difficult for me to pull the trigger even when I have straight rules and they triggered. Probably from the fact it would be a loss, but I need to go over it. Any advice? By the way, the cold shower advice is great. <laughs> you are another cold shower. Yeah, I mean, cold showers, I won't talk about cold showers, but yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, do you know what? You need to accept the fact that losing is part of the game. You are going to lose and you're going to lose lots. And the name of the game is not to not lose, it's to win more than you lose and to at the end of the month end of the quarter and the year to go hey i lost a lot of trades but i made a lot of trades and my net is is green that's your objective as so you can't fear loss you put yourself in the mindset of okay i've allocated risk capital to this whatever that is and i'd advise trading very very small as well like really small so you don't care so much about the loss just just get yourself used to taking loss and before you take each trade say to yourself i don't know if this trade is going to work but i've got to stop loss in place that's going to cost me X dollars, X pounds, X euros, whatever you're trading in. Am I happy to risk that to find out if this trade is going to make me 2X, 3X? Yes, I am. And then then just let what will be will be. You can't control what will happen after you pull the trigger. You can control your risk and that's it. So you know, get over that and just take trades and just take trades and just take trades and just start to realize that it doesn't matter. Each individual trade's outcome doesn't matter and don't fear it and, and definitely dial down the size you say you've gone from demo to live, absolutely go as small as you possibly can just to get used to trading money and, and forget about the profitability aspect of it. You just want to develop a system. You want to develop something you can pull the trigger const constantly. Um, hopefully uh, that has helped Armin. Aha, Armin has said, in my testing, ORB actually is profitable if traded all the time with specific and fixed parameters, perhaps less so when deployed with additional filters. That's interesting, Armin. I think it depends on the market conditions, right? If you, I don't know where you say all the time, how far you've gone back with that. But if you have, it's probably something that over the long term, if you did it, yeah, you probably would. Because generally speaking, I don't know how far you've gone back with this, markets go up, 
right? Especially you try, you, you, I know you trade indices in stocks, so they generally go up. So most of the time, that's probably going to be, uh, you know, effective. I think you're right. I think though, for me, I like to look at ways where I can really maybe reduce the number of trades, but increase the probability of success when I start to add some of these uh, different different filters in. But you're right. I think you've got to be careful about curve fitting uh, too much. Absolutely. And maybe something I mentioned, and it's not meant to be a back testing. <laughs> um, uh, webinar by any stretch of imagination but yeah you've got to be very careful i think this is probably why this is quite useful this has only got a fixed amount of filters that i think makes sense i play around uh thank you armin victor said have you played around with the opening range during the day for fx a little bit but not much i'm really focusing my work um and my research on the indices and stocks because i feel like the, you know that bell really is significant because when the bell goes the options are open there's money flowing Yes, you've got pre-market and aftermarket for stocks, but generally speaking, that's when the volume is done. FX, very, very different. Although, you know, I showed that example with cable, I do believe that you could perhaps explore using that as a proxy. Um, and by the way, um, you know, I, I know traders who have tried this on a variety of indices. So you've got, even if it's just on the indices, you've got something to explore. Nikkei, Hang Seng, um, Euro stocks, DAX, you know, you've got three specific opens during the 24 hour period. You've got the European open, you've got the US open, and the Asian open. So you can play around with it and see. Now, you might not be available to trade it on those sort of times, but, um, you know, it's something you can explore a bit more. Um, mouse has given up. Let's go there. Uh, welcome, Armin. When I receive the code, it should be, could be on its way. It should be on its way. Ah, here it is. Someone said they've got the link. So it's on its way. It's on its way. Be patient, I promise you, it's on its way. If it's not, I'll sort it. I will always make sure that if you're here and you're asking questions and you want this, then you will get it. I will make sure of that. Um, I'm feeling like I'm trying to find so many confirmations. Yes, Rowie, yeah, that's, that's another big thing. Um, and we're going to talk lots of this sort of stuff, you know, in the next couple of webinars, but you can't have you can't have all your ducks in a row. And even if you have, you know, if it's going to be profitable, you need a simple methodology pull the trigger when this happens that's it and what happens what happens you know the more complex you make it the harder it is to pull the trigger it's got this internal dialogue of yeah but what if it does this and lose money yeah but that's not done this and this indicator's done that and the, the, you got and you, you can't do anything you're paralyzed analysis by paralysis or paralysis analysis you've heard that phrase before i think for me it's okay you've got a few variables you look at you you decide to take the trade do i need any more information no that's done the decision is done I don't need any more information. Nothing else is going to change my mind. The decision is done. I'm happy to take the risk on that trade. Pull that trigger. If I lose, I lose. I've accepted that before. That's what the stop is for. If it wakes money, it makes money. Great. Next, 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 next. Analyze, iterate, adjust. Next batch. You know, play that game. Um, running through these quick. Uh, do you know if the low VIX correlates with analysis? Oh, yes. That's a little, that's an interesting one on to explore, Ayla. Ali, maybe, maybe I've mispronounced your name. Apologies. Uh, yeah, low VIX. Well, I don't know if it correlates exactly, but you could use the VXX actually and see and go actually or all the VIX obviously and say, hey, we're in a low VIX environment. Um, do I want to take it? I guess the only thing about that is that oh, sometimes the VIX stays low for a long period of time before it expands out. So maybe you could. You know, there's some exploration there, but ultimately, yeah, you're right. You know, the VIX is there as a, a kind of volatility uh, fear gauge isn't it effectively um oh a few more here uh step step on us last question today from me you're hey, very welcome um so so you say better is to trade stocks indices metals but no forex for me more wins i wouldn't say more more wins um but i think that the, the logic of this if you're talking about this strategy is you know what makes more sense to me on the indices and stocks uh, if you're asking generally should I trade best to trade stocks and these metals, but no forex for me? Uh, just pick one of those, man. There's enough opportunity. You, know, you don't need to be trading all this stuff. Um, you know, people. You, you, the more you focus, the better up chance you've got. So, regardless of whether you're talking about this strategy or not, you know, focusing on one or two instruments, I think is key. Or a basket of stocks. You know, when you're trying to do commodities, you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that. Um, you lose, you lose sight of what you're trying to achieve. I think, and I think the the, the better option, person, is my personal opinion, is to kind of hone that focus in a little bit and then you can expand it after a while you can go hey i want to kind of expand into a few more things um 
Uh, thank you. Yeah, appreciate that, Rowie. Kind words. Cheers, the link worked. Good. Link worked. Is the recording available to watch later? Abinav, yes, it will be. I think you'll send that. Do you work during news? Does it work? I guess it's do I work? Do I work? Yes, I work during news. I look at news. Um, but I think your question mean is asking, does it work during news? It's not really that type of uh, strategy. But if you're asking, do you should you trade it after, let's say you've had NFP or F- uh, Fed's a little bit later, isn't it? But if you've had, say, NFP or CPI, which is pre-market, does it work then? Yes, that's a type of day that you might expect a range expansion. So anything like that, we expect a range expansion. Now, you could argue that CPI, NFP, all the stuff's done, one thirty UK time, and by the time it opens, done, gone, it's a bit choppy. Yeah, maybe. But, you know, sometimes you get a reprice scenario, so it might be exploring that. Uh, how do I get the link, please? The link is at tradersmastermind.com forward slash ORB, and it will send you an email with the link. Uh, thank you, Rami, for your feedback. Right, thank you, ladies and gents. Appreciate that. One minute over, that's not too bad. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and have a play around with that, that tool. And if you find something interesting, then absolutely share it with me. I will be interested to see what you guys find. Thank you.